Hello and welcome to Alternate History. Today we will discuss how the world would have been a different place if the civil rights movement took a turn in a different direction. The difference between our timeline and the one that occurs is when Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated right after his I Have a Dream speech. Because Malcolm X's movement is mainly for black Muslims, Bobby Seale becomes the prominent civil rights leader. Because of, Seale eats the followers of Martin Luther King Jr. and he makes a branch, up, makes a branch in his group for those who well, are dedicated to civil rights. For them to work for his movement, many protesters turn violent because of Seal's philosophies, and the government refuses to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Eventually, Seal declares war on the USA itself because they won't give them what he wants. Many protests turn violent because of Seal's philosophies, and the government, in protest, refuses to sign the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The South eventually starts to become a hot zone of conflict. 1971, Bobby Seale declares war on anyone who refuses to give them what they want. Because of this, multiple factions come out in what becomes known as the Great Domestic War, which spans nine years. The factions are the USA, Malcolm X's nonviolent group, the KKK, and Bobby Seale's Black Panthers. The USA wins out, because, but the racial tensions are still high. This causes the U.S. to go into extreme debt, but gets mostly paid off in the Clinton administration. The war makes the U.S. drop off the map as a superpower, and the U.S. also becomes more xenophobic and isolationist again. The U.S. becomes the murder capital of the world with 2,791 deaths in 2001. This is mainly related to hate crimes, since Martin Luther King wasn't able to finish his part in American history. Institutional discrimination, cultural bias, and individual prejudice was interrupted with Martin Luther King's nonviolent movement. But without his leadership, history would have never been accomplished and the relations between blacks and whites would have gotten, in fact, worse. God bless Martin Luther King. We now have a witness here to tell us how he was affected by the social movement. Could you tell us how you were affected by this? Thank you for having me here, and of course, I used to own a store near one of the major sites of the social movements. I wasn't really picky about the race of the people buying from the store. Uh, to me, the money was just money, and about two-fifths of my customers were African Americans, and really, like I said before, I couldn't care less as long as I got the money. So how did the social movement affect your store? Well, a lot of my white customers got upset and stopped buying from me because they thought they shouldn't have to share the store with the blacks, and then the uh, blacks started leaving because they, uh, they wanted to support other black store owners, and they didn't think they should be buying from a white man. What happened next? I eventually had to sell the store. I had to get a job as a construction worker to support my family. I wasn't well received by my coworkers because they were all white and wanted me to side against the blacks, but it didn't matter as long as I got money for my family. Thank you for answering our questions. We wish you luck with the negative consequences of the social movement. You don't have to be a history expert to know that the Great Domestic War was one of the biggest and most influential wars in American history. Our country became divided on almost every issue, especially the ones on segregation. What started as a peaceful protest for blacks to gain rights turned violent after the assassination of Martha Luther King. We were all once one nation, but slowly after Bobby Seale became the predominant civil rights leader and riots and battles started to appear on a regular basis, the country was divided. We had the government of the USA trying to settle things down. We had the Black Panthers using violence to gain rights. Malcolm X and his followers attempting to stop discrimination in a nonviolent way, and of course, the KKK, whose group only grew after Martin Luther King was shot. 1963 was the last year where the Republican Party and the Democratic Party were the main party's campaign for office. Now we have leaders of the KKK, the Black Panthers, and many other groups that came close to taking office. During the elections of the time of war, Bobby Seale's group came extremely close in taking over presidency as a large percentage of America believed in Seale's cause. Even with the country divided, and in what was our 
Second Civil War, the American government always had the upper hand. The U.S. eventually did win the war, but lost in it all was the issue of desegregation. Many people originally supported desegregation, but with all the violence used in an attempt to get it, whites began to change their mind and wanted to be segregated from blacks who were turning violent. Now today, most whites want to be segregated from blacks, and the interracial murder rates are higher than ever. Sometimes I wonder, what would have become of America if Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't assassinated and blacks fought in a nonviolent manner? I was near what they called the hot zone. There were constantly military troops passing by my house. Maria switched sides four times during the war. The strange thing to me was that each side barely differed when it came down to the aftermath of my area being liberated. The area was originally controlled by the USA. I talked to a black soldier who was stationed around a corner at my house. His name was Marcus Smith, a man who all know for the rest of the war. I asked him what he was doing, fighting for the U.S. rather, rather than Bobby Seale. He said that Bobby Seale wasn't bringing peace and that Malcolm X's group were more risky than any of the other sides. I became close with Marcus and we became friends. When it was evident that the area was going to be taken over by the KKK, I hid him in my house beneath some floorboards. So the KKK was the second faction to occupy your area? Yes, the second that they cleared the general area. They rallied all the blacks they could find and lynched five in the intersection I could see from my home. Every day, they controlled the town. They would lynch one a day in the same intersection. I wanted to leave, but Marcus was living underneath my floorboards, and I had to keep on feeding him, or else he would die. I heard that they found a black in another home across the street, and they tortured him all day long and killed the owner of the apartment. I didn't know, though. I heard him scream, and I never looked outside my window, because everyone else did the same thing. What was the third group that occupied your area? It was the Panthers that took my area the third time. They were just as bad. The Panthers took any whites they said looked like they didn't fully believe in the cause. They made the rest of us watch as they, as they executed them in a ditch on the other side of town. During this time, Marcus came out and was able to see the outside world for the first time in a while. He was amazed when he saw the night all lit up from the gunfire and shells being shot around. A few artillery shells actually landed in the streets of my street, but nothing intense like the shelling near Birmingham. It seemed almost every day the Panthers executed someone. They would instill fear in us by giving each one of us pictures of people they executed. They made us sure each residence kept them in binders as a, as a check our loyalty. Each block of my area was given a specific officer from the Panthers to check our binders and take what he deemed were essential to the troops' war effort. Marcus, one night at dinner, walked over to me and whispered in my ear, I preferred the former than latter. He preferred the KKK? Not many people up near the north knew this, but the Panthers executed their fair share of blacks too. Actually, I think they may have killed more blacks. Why do you think that? Because they killed Marcus. They made me watch as they lynched him. I just don't understand. The Panthers were for blacks, not against them. It's unbelievable. Thanks for your time. And take care. Since Martin Luther King wasn't able to finish his nonviolent movement and, and segregation, the civil rights movement, institutional discrimination, and cultural bias and individual prejudice was never interrupted and therefore blacks in our history never gained full citizenship. Without the bias of African Americans changing for the better, the world would have always viewed them the same. A nonviolent movement led by MLK changed people's views on blacks and soon gave them rights. In our alternate history, that didn't happen and the institutional discrimination was never fixed. Thanks to MLK, the alternate history is not our actual history. Good job. <laughs> you okay? Okay. 
Is Marcus okay? Mark Marcus is alive! Oh, thank God. <laughs> Olivia! You missed it! Marcus, Marcus is, is alive! alive. <laughs> he is? Yeah, he's alive! He's right there! He's right there! 